Came down to this southern town last summer To show the folks a brand new way of life But all you've shown the folks around here is trouble And you've only added misery to their strife Your concern is not to help the people And I'll say again, though it's been often said Your concern is just to bring discomfort, my friend And your policy is just a little red now ain't I right? Ain't you right? Ain't you right? It matters not to you how people suffer And should they you consider that a gain You bring a lot of trouble to the town and then you leave That's part of your communistic game I detect a little communism I can see it in the things you do Communism, socialism, call it what you like There's very little difference in the two Now ain't I right? Ain't you right? Ain't you right? Your followers sometimes have been a bearded bathless bunch There's even been a minister or two A priest, a nun, a rabbi, and an educated man Have listened and been taken in by you all the country's full of two-faced politicians Who encourage you with words that go like this Burn your draft card if you like, it's good to disagree That's a get acquainted communistic kiss Now ain't I right? Ain't you right? Ain't you right? One politician said it would be nice to send some blood And help the enemy in Vietnam that's what he says, here's what I say, let's just keep the blood Instead let's send that politician man Let's rid the country of the politicians Who coddle tramps and march out in our streets Protesting those who want to fight for freedom, my friend This kind of leader makes our country weak Now ain't I right? Ain't you right? Let's look and find the strong and able leaders It's time we found just how our neighbors stand If we're to so communistic boots will never trod Across the fields of freedom that were given to us With the blessing of our great almighty God Across the fields of freedom that were given to us With the blessing of our great Good evening, everybody. This is Jonathan of Vigilance uh, coming at you live from our little bunker. We're back after a holiday hiatus, and we got our buddy back from the Clinton Foundation. He's alive and well, but I don't think he'll ever be the same again. Poor old IT. <sighs> See, he's uh, they they did some experiments <sighs> with him. But anyways, we're back. We're in full swing. I'm glad to be here. Made it back. I got two energy drinks in me. Everyone was having uh, freaking out. Apparently, that's not healthy, I hear. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, not the best. Yeah. IT set up this awesome photo today. I think it's the best one we've got so far. It looks really sick. Uh, anyways, um, thank you, Lord, for bringing us here together tonight. Uh Sorry, stuttered tonight, and thank you, Lord, for protecting us as I, we've traveled and worked this week. Thank you for uh, a successful Thanksgiving and that all of us made it safe and were able to see our families and sharing good times. Continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to bless our listeners. Bless the people of America, Lord, and just continue with your new and precious mercies every morning, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to open up with what topic? We got quite a bit of topics today. A lot of stuff happened. Like, so over Thanksgiving week, we had a fella in New York. We're kind of remaining unbiased on this because there's just, just clouds, just smoke mirrors and clouds and just ridiculous. Uh, it's not clear. So this uh, fella, his name was uh, Alexander Booth. Alexander, Alexander Booth. Alexander Booth. He, so originally... 
a lot of the K community and different other communities that are pro-gun, pro-Second Amendment, jumped on this bandwagon of defending him because it was the understanding, uh, what he shared out to social media, what he asked for help with, was that the officers of the Putnam County Sheriff's Department mm -hmm. were raiding his home, uh, coming to confiscate a 30-round magazine, is, I believe, what he originally stated. However, as time progressed, there's not really any proof that there was a 30-round magazine or that there was any such thing as a red flag warrant in the process. Uh, the police have released information saying that it was a domestic dispute and they were just responding to a domestic violence uh, complaint. And there's a lot of conflicting views. So basically, the police story is completely different from the story we're hearing from Alexander Booth. Sadly, Alexander Booth, last time I checked, has been detained yet again after a short moment of freedom. Uh, he, in his short moment of freedom, he was going to disclose more information of what happened. But right before he was about to do that, he was silenced again. Under this understanding, uh, as far as I can tell, me and War Spirit are a little skeptical about the whole thing, thinking it might be some type of plant. Uh, so, you know, be careful with it. You know, don't... Don't jump on the bandwagon and don't disclose any more information of your tactics than, you know, like really what you need to because enemies are listening and, you know, it's just honestly just be careful out there because this this is kind of weird. Like, for example, the uh, ATF and everything. I don't know if it was the ATF, but it was more just the local sheriff's department. It was just the sheriff's department, yeah. Sheriff's department and prob probably like a couple of other departments, right? Um, from right now, all I understand is it was just the, the sheriff's department, the, okay. the, 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 count, the, the Putnam County. Right. So that being said, uh, there's rumors of the protesters and stuff who actually showed up to the call for help from Alexander Booth, who said there was APCs in the area with signal jammers that disabled cell phones. Right. Um, so this being said, that's very interesting. If that's true, that is kind of weird. Well, and, what you know, they were wanting, John, and this is, this is what scares me. Is I, I'm afraid again, like the, he was a plant, and they were just doing this so they could test their ability to shut people down off of social media. Right. Because all these, it, like, so these, they wanted to see what would happen with this red flag stuff. Because right. people are saying, you know, the the three percenters, quote unquote, are like, yeah, we're gonna storm the castle and go save whoever does it. And so they're so my fear is they're like, well, let's see if they really do. Right. And so two things happen. One. They were able to test signal jammers and see how that well that worked. And two, not that many people showed up. All these militias that cl claimed they were going to show up from reports that I read, right. nobody showed. They said they were going to, and they talked a big game on 4chan and all these different places. Well, I heard that there was like 100 people there. Mm, that's not what I read. Because I read uh, from different posters that there's like hundreds of people, there's a lot of support, and then I heard from conflicting people that there's no one here. We'll and see, then yeah. I heard that was a tactic to try and get people not to show up. So it's again, it's like it's a, such an insane thing that happened here that it's yeah. like. So um, War Spirit actually took it upon himself to call Putnam, uh, right. the police department, uh, or the sheriffs of Putnam County. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, I called the Putnam Sheriff uh, 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 County Sheriff's Department. Yeah, and uh, they're they're loaded. They're located in Carmel, New York. Sounds correct. Um, I'm not going to give out the phone number because I don't necessarily think that the Putnam County Sheriffs are the bad guys in this. Uh, I really don't because I, I'm hearing conflicting information. I don't know yet. But I found um, the Fr Freedom of uh, Information Act. Hold on one second. We got a radio in the background we're going to turn down. Yeah, I think we got it. There we go. Killed the bug. Yeah. So, anyways, so I'm, I'm not really going to give out that information right now. It took a while to find it, so they obviously kind of tried to hide it. Um, but not necessarily in a, in a malicious way. It's just they've gotten all kinds of phone calls. Um, but uh, the captain, her name is uh, Lisa Milano. Um, I had a, a, a lieutenant uh, direct me to her. She was already gone for the weekend. And I just left her a message say, telling her who I was and that we was with a, our news organization, um, um, 
didn't uh, tell him what it was, is today the day, I didn't use that, I just said we was with a news organization, and that we wanted information on um, Alex Booth of, of, of what happened. Um, he's 28 years old, he was arrested uh, November 29th of 2019, and I put on there there's conflicting information and I would like it front straight from the horse's mouth um, so we'll see we'll see if I get a call back Monday right um, I left her my phone number um, if she doesn't call me I'm going to call again right well we want to know and th that's yeah. great Intel anyways as you said earlier straight from the horse's mouth and I mean again who knows uh, if they're very deflective then I'd be a little suspicious yeah at the same time, it's like, it's such a sensitive topic. Um, I think it's interesting that this kind of exploded. It didn't, um, you know, I, I was going to compare it, but it calmed down. I was going to originally compare it to the Bundy Ranch with well, uh, yeah. the scale of it was getting. But again, it's not really clear if it even got to that scale. Well, here's the thing with the Bundys. They were pretty much open with everything that was going on, okay? And so there wasn't any, like, question of what was happening. Yeah, genuine. It was like, this okay. is what's happening. Yeah. And so, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's a bizarre uh, mixture of things. Um, how to put it? Uh, that's exactly what we're getting into. It's like, I think very possibly that there's a lot of signs pointing to this to being exactly a tactic, a tactical kind of espionage act. Because it's yeah. like, you know, they, they want to see how fast we're able to respond. They want to see how fast they need to respond before, you know, like how fast they can cut off, you know, social media, everything else until they right. can censor it and shut it up. Right. You know, they, they're in a, everything about this is pointing to that, which is, you know, it's kind of... Interesting, and I think a lot of people are kind of smacking themselves in the head, especially amongst like our community, because you know I was on it. I shared a post. We fell for it. Yeah, uh, I was like, okay, well, you know, you know, I'm gonna share this information. I'm gonna get this out there. You know, I'm gonna start saving photos for whenever the scrub happens, because usually with stuff like this, if it's a genuine government thing, there's a scrub. Yeah. They scrub the internet, and there's like no mention of it anywhere, which is very interesting that how real that is. And how common that is. It's very dystopian. Mm -hmm. But, um, <coughs> uh, there's my asbestos. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about asbestos. Yeah, we're going to talk about I'm asbestos. I'm going to turn this off because I got too much ADD and every time it goes off, I can't. Yeah, it's, it's a little hard. Yeah, there so we, we had a scanner in the back, but it's just, you yeah. know. It, we, we tried it. Yeah, we, we, it's one of those things where you think it's going to be cool and it didn't turn out to be cool. And I'm yeah, it probably sounds like ass in the that's Still, what I thought too. Yeah. It probably sounds horrible in the background. It's probably hard to understand us. So yeah, so we're gonna get go ahead and turn that off. But that's fine. You know, maybe we'll screw around with that after the podcast. Listen yeah, to some yeah. stuff. Maybe put on FPD or something. Who knows? But um, speaking of speaking of that, we was uh, listening to one a couple nights ago. There was a funny one, uh, guys. This, so this homeboy has his girlfriend in the pickup. I guess they get into a dispute. And he kicks her out and runs her over. <laughs> Jeez. And it's terrible. then um, um, San Juan County Sheriff's Department um, run him down and I guess finally found him and all that. But it, it was... Uh, well, it was funny because she was conscious. She's breathing. She's fine, yeah, but her yeah. legs are broken. Um, anyways, uh, when one of the officers turned on uh, his radio, you could hear like in the background, that mother, and then he like let go of the transmission yeah, at yeah, that yeah. moment and cut off. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah, was, he was so call, angry. He was calling a dispatch. Yeah, and basically was saying what was you know, that, that he arrived on scene. He's all, he effing run me. No, but but she he didn't go, she didn't get to the effing part. That mother run me <laughs> over. Like, but he let off, so it was it was right. funny. Yeah. That's funny. Anyways, uh, so as we're talking about, this whole Alex Booth thing is odd. It's weird, and I think it's, I think there's kind of, what I mean by red flag when I say it right now is like a beware. And what I mean by that is like, usually this sort of thing doesn't go viral until like a day after. Yeah. This went viral within minutes. This was within like 30 minutes. Or That's was, the other fishy thing about it. It was like 300 people on it within 30 minutes. Again, and with, then the, bundies, with yeah. the bundies, it took like a couple of weeks for it to catch on. Yeah. No, with this, it was yeah. 
snap of a finger, everyone was looking at it. Yeah. And now, granted, they, they can they can argue that okay, so the Bundys are older guys, so they obviously didn't have a. I don't know, what was it? Was it was, wasn't Snapchat? It was a uh, Instagram. Instagram. They, uh-huh. He had a this guy had an Instagram post. His name his uh, Instagram is uh, Whiskey Warrior five five six. Um, I watched the videos on that too. Right. And I don't think Homeboy was all there. He, no, he's a little off. He's yeah. uh, inebriated at least. He was at the very least inebriated, but to me, he almost felt like he had something more than just inebriation. Yeah. He just got out of the strap-in chair where they forced number stations into his brain yeah. until he did this. Yeah, like he was freaking retarded. Or the something. numbers, Mason! No, so that's what I mean. There's a lot of weird stuff surrounding this, especially considering how he was like... He was talking to the page that he originally spoke to that made it go viral. It was a libertarian meme page. It was, uh, I think it was called Libertarians of the West V2 because the page had been taken down before. So it was, I believe it was called Libertarians of the West. He originally contacted. That may be a mistake and there's really no way I can source that because mm-hmm. that's not really sourced at all. But the thing about it is um, these guys uh, actually got into contact with him again and he said... All right, well, I, I would love to tell my story. I'm going to, like, have a phone call with you guys. And, you know, they're like, okay, cool. We'll record everything. Right. Just to have a straight story from you, you know, your first encounter. And just have an honest story from you, you know, the full thing. Right. And, like, right as he was about to, like, go into a phone call, he was detained again. Which, you know, yeah, it could be the government trying to shut him up. Or it could be, you know, he's like, oh, crap, they're on to me. And... You know, just the ATF was like, you know, doing the thing in the side where they're like doing kill it, kill it with their hands. And mm. he just shut off his social media because, you know, that, that's kind of what we're looking at right now. It's like this could be like a rise because like why? How would you know to get your APCs out like yeah. right as quick like that with the signal jammers? That's suspicious. That's the main like thing I'm yeah. looking at here. I'm like because most police. Even if it was going nuts, they wouldn't pull out signal jamming APCs. Like, right. Especially not a sheriff's department. That's a little bizarre. I mean, granted, it, I don't live in New York. Yeah. You know, I'm not a New Yorker. Maybe maybe they just bring signal jammers out like as a... Like a st- that's their standard SOP. And that's their standard, you know, everyday thing. It's yeah. like, well, let's just shut down the phone so people can't call. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what their their SOPs would be there. But uh, another thing, too. Okay, so he was supposedly a Afghanistan vet. Um, and also, so in the videos, he has, uh, uh, blade attached to his chest rig. He's wearing a chest rig, like with plate carrier mm-hmm. and he's got mag pouches on the bottom, but no mags in them. So here's the thing I'm thinking, John. Um, okay. So if I had Joe, John Q alphabet boy outside right. my house right and he was coming in i'm thinking to take my guns right i'd be strapped yeah you'd be strapped. i'd have my 30 round magazines that supposedly that they had you know right. i don't even show one it's like well as i understand he didn't have any firearms isn't that strange too he, that he is just, see this a 30 round mag but no no guns I, he didn't have any guns but i call <laughs> bravo sierra on all this I would be strapped with all my 30-round mags, my freaking AR, and shit would go down. If he would be like, come to my door, I'm going to freaking kill you. Right. You know, you're not taking my I don't, shit. Go And, and that, that goes to all you alphabet boys out there. If you come to my house to take my guns, you better bring yours. I'll, you'll probably kill me. You probably will. But I'm going to take as many of you motherfuckers with me as possible. Right. Have a nice night. Have <laughs> a nice night. And I mean, if anyone's like, oh my gosh, that's so radical. It's like, well, no, that's that's just constitutional. You know, if anybody tries to take a firearm, we have a right to resist. Correct. You know, that's not illegal even to proclaim yep. that. It's like if someone tries to take my property, yep. I have a right And that's just under it. The Constitution. I'm not saying I am right. going to provoke no. the situation. I'm just going to protect what's m- mine. Right. Well, you know, the problem is there's no point in protecting what's ours because the lake already took it. Well, that's true. You that's know, true. I mean, we talk all this big crap, but the lake already swallowed all our guns. They haven't taken my Roomba. Um, um, Your war crime Roomba? My war crime Roomba. <laughs> it's a little flamethrower. <laughs> 
Speaking of Elon Musk, back in the day, I, I know it's unrelated, but Elon Musk actually has a like personal, like, could you imagine CCW flamethrower? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He I've has a it. like a rifle sized flamethrower. Yeah, I've it's seen like him. a little. Uh, you, you put a little aerosol can mm-hmm. in it, and it's like. It's like really good range for what it is. It shoots flame, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, so we had that Alex Booth thing going on, and let's talk about Biden. Oh my gosh. I couldn't make it up. I couldn't. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> Joe Biden, because uh, at first, you know, and a lot of people in the comments like, this is a bad lip reading. He didn't actually say that, but he did. Yeah. So it's clear to as quote day. his uh, speech word for word, uh, we don't uh, have don't it here, I don't know if you'll but have that's okay. Word word. Uh, close to word for word, it's uh, it starts off when he starts going on this tangent. Is I've got hairy legs, I've got really hairy legs, and they turn blump. B- 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 they, 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 he does. He stutters a bunch when he's saying this. He's obviously senile, and he's like they, they, they turn blonde in the sun. And when he says that, yeah. this is really important to understand. There's this little black girl off to his right. And he puts his arm around her and pulls her in close when he says that. Yeah, yeah, really does. creepy, really creepy. And he says they turn blonde. That my hairs they turn blonde in the sun. And he's talking about his leg hairs. And he says, and the kids in the pool would rub my legs down, and watch they'd my make, hairs flow. Like, yeah, stand watch up. my hair stand back up. Yeah, yeah, they'd watch my blonde leg hair stand back up. And uh, and then he goes on, and then he's like, I learned a lot about the roaches. I, know, I love kids, and I love when, it, and this is his words, not mine. I love it when kids bounce on my lap. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there after seeing this, mouth ajar. You know, my <laughs> mouth is to the floor. I'm like, this is a joke. And kids jump on my lap. And yeah. I love it when kids jump on my lap. It's, I'm like, the world is ran by clowns. Mm. I swear, like, comedians run the elite. These people are these people are just pranking us right now. This yeah. is all a joke. Yeah, they're 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 punking us right yeah, now. Yeah, they're punking us. Like you have to be joking. Yeah. Man. Like I'm trying to not be too profane, but you have to be effing joking me. Yeah. When when this guy who everyone says is creepy says this on live TV or whatever, and he's still in the election. And I mean, I I hope, you know, at that at this point, how funny that was! I kind of hope that he stays in the spotlight for a while, just for the comedic effect. There's no way in hell. He's I hope. Win. I hope he makes the, the 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 nomination. Dude, imagine if he is the Democrat nominee. He this we will have podcast gold <laughs> if he makes the nomination for the Democrats. <laughs> oh, another another uh, thing for those of you out there that may be in mourning. Kamala Harris stepped down um, out, off out of the elect, out of the the, the limelight. She's not uh, running anymore. She decided it was no longer economical um, for her to run. That was yesterday. Yeah, everyone's dropping like flies here. Yeah. I think like honestly, at this rate, like everyone's gonna drop out, and there's not gonna be anybody left running against Trump. Yep. Except maybe like a third party. Rumor like, has it is her legs got tired from being split in the air. Jeez. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty good. Oh my gosh. Oh. Man, you know, it's been an exciting few weeks this holiday. And I actually got to talk to a sheriff in Aztec. Uh, yeah, right. I did. I actually got to talk to him. And so like Thanksgiving, for example. A sheriff's deputy. Sheriff's deputy. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, you know, there's like only like one sheriff or whatever. Yeah, well, I just want to see, make sure you didn't talk to Shane or if you talked to one of his deputies. I, no, I didn't okay. talk to Ferrari. He was a okay. young fella, real slim, kind of a red beard. He's a cool guy. He's real cool. You know, he, uh, appendix carries a karambit, has a lot of the medical equipment we talked about. Was it last podcast? Or yeah, podcast yeah, that before? was the last podcast. Yeah, last so. podcast we talked a lot about a, uh, CAT and RAT, uh, what do they call those? Tourniquets. Tourniquets. Yeah, tourniquets and... Um, the difference between cat and rat and then... Of Israeli you're... bandages and he, you know, he was talking about how he had to use Narcan a lot, which, of course, around here, with meth is still a thing and mm-hmm. who knows what else, you know, pills, opioids. Opioids is nuts everywhere right now. Yeah, that's one thing that's I don't worry crisis. about. Even if I could get Narcan, I wouldn't carry it. I'm like... Yeah, that's not a medical thing I'm gonna worry about, especially in the boogaloo or yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's like, it's like, yeah. like you know, it's like if someone you're gonna die. If someone overdoses in the boogaloo, it's like cool free stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More for me. So, um, anyways, uh, what was it? Uh, I was talking to him. 
We have like four shootouts on Thanksgiving with just Aztec PD. Yeah, I don't doubt it. And really? I mean, that's just, yeah, I'm not making that up. Yeah, yeah. IT looked at me. He's like, damn. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, night before last, again, like, well, uh, me and this guy here, uh, uh, Vigilance, was uh, hanging out uh, just around town and stuff. Um, I had my radio on, and so that's when we heard the the lady that got run over and everything. Yeah, poor thing. And, She's okay, though. And he told me, he's like, I didn't realize this was this crazy. He's like, every night, dude, you turn on the radio, especially on the San Juan County side. Dude, I bet just, Friday is nuts right Oh, now. yeah, yeah. It's probably nonstop. You wait for, like, about like mid, when midnight hits, it gets really crazy. That's nuts. I don't know why. Oh, and the truth, it's truthful, too. On a full moon, shit goes down. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. You know, because I've got... The ERs uh, are full yeah. and, and, and the dispatch is crazy. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either. And I've heard that, you know, because uh, I work, you know, not just me, but a whole bunch of people I know work in like different fields where we hear about people who go through certain systems. And the thing about that, it's like always on a full moon. It's almost like, you know, because I've never been one for superstition, but on full moons, people go nuts. And that's everywhere. That's not like just here. That's yeah, that's, that's in like urban areas. That's worldwide. Yeah, that's not just, you know, the religious, like, you know, that's not like Navajo reservation with their traditions or nothing. That's everywhere. That's yeah. white man, black man, all races, you know, and it's it's weird to me. It's like, what's with, the, is it the gravity that changes? Is I don't it, know. It's some, maybe something deals with people's chemical reactions in their brains or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's maybe, weird. I don't know. Maybe there's something to this. Maybe we really do got monkey brain. <laughs> maybe you're right. We're just in the matrix. We're just, and that's maybe another thing. Maybe it's like a purge in the matrix of that's just right. like, uh, you know. I'm trying to think. I think uh, that major accident I had back in the day was a full moon. Was it? I'm not sure, but I think it may have been. Uh, just you know, but that was also like because uh, the animals act weird in the full moon too. They do, and uh, that's when I, you know, there was a deer that caused that where I was rolling. I was mm-hmm. ejected. Yeah, I was ejected from a car as a kid, by the way. I'm totally fine, but yeah, fun story. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Um, I'm totally fine. No, I'm no. totally fine. <laughs> you know, um, oh, now here we are. I'm going to get demonetized for, you know, chromosome talk. Um, <laughs> where was we? Uh, we also had a shooting. Was it at Pearl Harbor or was it a base in Florida? I don't know. It was, it was in Florida. It was in Pensacola, Florida. Oh, well. My and dumbass, I heard it was in... Yeah, I heard you talk about that to me on the phone. I'm like, Pearl Harbor? Where does he get that? I heard it was in Pearl Harbor! No, it was Pensacola, Florida, in a naval base. I promise. That's weird. Well, you know, and that's what I saw on the TV. Maybe it's just another Mandela effect. Like Maybe. I don't know. Because I, I, I oh, heard... Oh, speaking of which, you know, something weird. When I looked up the Alexander Booth... Yeah. There was another incident with a 30 round mag in 2013 where they did a red flag thing all the way back into 2013 that it happened. With yeah. Alexander Booth? No, no. But, they, but it says just a uh, New York man, and they never did say his name, and I found it kind of creepy and weird. That's extremely creepy and weird. And I couldn't find any other information. Well, I mean, there, it's like uh, there, there was a video that went viral here recently. It was. Um, Trying to knock my noggin a bit. It was a news station. It was when the El Paso shooting happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, Walmart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was when that happened. Uh, there was this uh, news anchor. It was in the morning. Right. And she said, th- you know, it was like 13 people died in that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was like, 13 casualties in El Paso, Walmart, uh, shooting, you know, gun, lone gunman, all that. And then she, she like goes back. She's like, oh, crap, that hasn't happened yet. And then she puts the paper down. And then she like keeps going, and I'm like, and every you know people uh, caught that on camera. I know you know they caught that, you know, because I don't know if it was just a mental slip or what she meant by this, but it, it, she actually said it. Look it up. Look up like creepy El Paso news broadcast, and that's what it is. It's like, oh crap, that hasn't happened yet, and she puts it to the side, and it's like, what do you mean that hasn't happened yet? <laughs> you know, so that's that's kind of again, it's like there's something going on. And, you know, there was a lot of talk when the El Paso things happened. Like I said, that there's going to be more and more. Let's see. Pensacola. Yeah, oh, yeah. Pensacola naval base shooter who killed three was Saudi. Yeah, I feel like a dumbass now. I said Pearl Harbor. 
I, I, where did I hear? Wasn't there a Pearl Harbor shooting? Though? Wasn't there a Pearl Harbor shooting? Was there? I thought there was a. Pearl Look Harbor it up. Shooting. I thought there was a Pearl Harbor shooting. Dude, oh, now what? I'm confused because I haven't heard anything about Pearl Harbor. Dude, when you mentioned it on the phone, I was like, "What is he talking about Pearl Harbor for?" He's in Florida. The Pearl yeah. Harbor shooting lasted 23 seconds and left department. This was today, I think. Yeah, or something like that. Uh, uh, so they had the it, Pensacola what? one happened today. today? Yeah. Oh. Oh, this is that didn't happen today. That happened like a few days ago. This is just an, uh, oh, a thing so, that came out today. So there was there was two naval bases in attacked, the, and the, that's a little creepy. Yeah. Does it say who the the Pearl Harbor guy was? Hold on. We got a uh, noise. Oh, it's CNN. Thank you. Very cool. So uh, Pearl Harbor was a U.S. sailor. Hmm. Um. See, I told you there was a Pearl Harbor. Yeah, there shooting. was a Pearl Harbor. Shooting. Yeah, I, I was like, I was like, you, you know, wait. Once you said, wait, there is a Pearl Harbor. Show, I was like, wait, yeah, there was. Though. Yeah, yeah. No, I was like, there had to be. Mm. Now I'm creeped out. Yeah, they had two naval bases attacked recently. That's two naval bases. That is weird. That's really strange. And one was a raghead, but then now they're saying this was a U.S. soldier. Soldier. Or well, a sailor, maybe. Yeah, what, it was a sailor. What, what religion was he? I don't care if he's American or not. All right, if he's of the if he's a jihadi, he's a jihadi. Allahu Akbar. Boom. Yeah, so uh, it's hard telling, and you know we're probably not going to find that, especially not on CNN. Nah. But I'm you know, surprised they released that this was a Saudi. Right. Um, I think the only reason why they did is because he was with a military, and so. They can say, well, you know, he's not an Islamist. He's just one of their military guys or whatever. What I what I want to know too, though, with the with the Saudi guy, because he was he was a he was an Air Force from the Saudi Air Force, right? Doing training over here. They don't even let our guys have guns in on the bases, which I think is so stupid. Right. Um, how did he get access to a gun? Well, I mean, that's the whole thing too. Even with the last like Fort Hood. Yeah, the Fort Hood shooter. Yeah, Fort Hood shooter. It's like, well, you a know, song or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like you got these yeah. guys coming in and they got guns and yeah. they're shooting our military, yeah. the <laughs> most armed military in the world. But we don't have any. We don't got no guns on our bases. No, no, not loaded, anyways. Oh, but they can't be trusted with guns, John. No, because, because they're, they're just co- like college age kids. Oh yeah, you know, but you know, send them to Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, they can get blown up there. Yeah. And see, that's what's weird. Okay, so when, like, a buddy of mine, when he said when he was over in the sandbox, you always carried your rifle with you everywhere. You even carried it to chow. Right, yeah. Okay, so I think it should be the same on our bases here. No kidding. It just makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bizarre. It's like, what a perfect thing to have... Your soldier, your 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 everyday soldier in the base is completely disarmed, right? And then just have a literal enemy combatant from the enemy combatant country run in and shoot your crap up. Like, and and you could even, if you're worried about safety or whatever, you could even have them carry the the their the the M fours like the way the Israelis carry the M fours, right? Where you got the sec the separate mag holder onto the rifle, right, yeah. to where the magazine isn't even in the rifle, right? That way, I mean, yeah, now you got to take it out and put it in the rifle, but you have it with you, right? Yeah, you know. So, I mean, if they're worried about it, they could do it that way. Um, right. And, I mean, there's, you know, there's training. There's psychological rundowns for the military. You know, it's not exactly like it's, you know, here, you know, welcome to the army, kid. <laughs> well, it's just it. They've gone through boot. Right. Um, the, the, all that tells me is they're not giving them enough firearms training. Right. And apparently not enough accountability training or something. Right. Not enough. Because, I mean. Yeah. Not, they, they, they can't trust them with a with a like, rifle. like what's the point like honestly they because you know even the bases they do watches where someone will stay up sure and watch and that's a training thing sure they're they're what yeah. are they watching for well the whole thing with with these people who are watching in the night shift and everything they don't have a gun well, what are they gonna do yell somebody's coming get the bat get the fire extinguisher get know. the narwhal tusk sorry I don't know. Well, we can talk about that in a minute. But <laughs> I don't know about now, but so my boss, my one of my ex-bosses way back in the day, back when I treated Wells, it was a little company called Microbial Energy. And uh, he he went through the Navy. And back then, this is the Vietnam era, 
He went to Vietnam. Yeah. They actually were issued a 1911 if they was on watch. If you was on watch, you had a you were issued a flashlight and a 1911. There you go. Um, now I don't know if they still do that for watches or not. But back then, they they were issued a pistol. And I wonder if for it's just like one state person to state, on watch. like on the different bases too. I wonder if like different states allow. Um, you know, military bases. It doesn't really, like really matter as far right. as like. This was in California, so. Well, I I understand that it doesn't really you know, like it's military. They're not yeah. gonna like. It's not a Second Amendment issue, but I do wonder if there's like a, if there's like a difference in like training and just culture. Speaking that, like, you know, the drill sergeants are like, well, I want my boys to be armed. You know what I mean? Or whoever is in charge of that court, whatever, marshals. or I'm not a military vet, okay? Forgive me. <laughs> I was doing some study on it. And uh, did you know, like, say you live on base housing. housing, Like, say you're, you're in the military and you live on base housing. You have to turn all your guns into the armory. You can't keep them in your house if it's base housing. Okay. You are unarmed. In your own home, if it's if you live in a base house, it's interesting. You have to turn your weapons into the armory, and then get a note from your superior officer if you want to go take it to the range. Okay. Yeah. That's that's that's, bizarre. that's crazy. You know, and like I said, it's a military. Shouldn't they be more armed than your everyday like citizens? Exactly. You know, and I, I'm not saying that like they should be because I'm an American and I think like you know it's just of course Americans should be as armed as their military. But <laughs> I mean, I, I'm all for uh, private owned tanks. I'm all for that. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, I think that's bizarre that our military when they're at home is less armed than uh, just an average Joe American. Yeah. Because, I mean, the whole point of the military is to uh, put, you know, put a stop. The whole point of the military is to fight. <laughs> right. You know, and it's like a military isn't going to be a military. It isn't a military if it doesn't have weapons. Right. That's a, that's a force of really decently trained uh, hand fighters. But no matter how good you're trained with hand-to-hand -hand combat, unless you're able to get close, you're not going to do much about a gun. Yeah, even if you got a blade, you know, that's yeah. the whole uh, taking a knife to a gunfight phrase. It doesn't work very it well. It doesn't work. And so, it's bizarre. And I don't know why that would be. Do you think there's, like, maybe some kind of correlation to the state, or is it just stupidity? I think it's the liberalization of our military. Possibly. Um... I mean, it's always kind of been that way, but I mean, I just, I, I think it is par partially just the the soy boy as far as like into our military. Like, well, we can't have all those young boys and girls having guns. And that's, that's what really bugs me with this whole, you know, because we talked about it a lot. It's like, um, but something I really haven't really got to say on the podcast is you have, you know, you have these men. You're training them to go to a war zone, potentially, mm -hmm. uh, unless they're the National Guard. Uh, you have them training for the possibility that they're going to enter a war zone. And in a war zone, you have enemies mm -hmm. that are shooting at you. And if they capture you, they're going to yell at you. They're going to torture you. And you're training them as if it's like Sunday school for teenagers. You know, yeah. it's like it's, it's daycare for teens. And... Uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to be politically correct and safe space in a military because there's nothing politically correct or safe space when Haji is shooting over your freaking head and you're sitting there with sandbags screaming for your mom. There's nothing safe space. No. It's not going to stop because you're scared. Yeah. It's not going to stop because you're uncomfortable. You are in a war zone. And honestly, if you're not trained for that, then yeah, it's on the people who trained you. Yeah. Or you weren't paying attention, uh, one or the other, but honestly, they don't allow not paying attention in a properly trained military. There's a phrase from Magpul Industries that I really like. It says that you, in, in a time of crisis, you will not rise to the occasion. You will fall back to the level of your training. Exactly. And, you know, what, what is... I, I, and don't get me wrong, I, I, the most of the war fighters I've seen that are actually... In the combat zones, I, I've not seen flawed training, at least not commonly. You know, I've mm -hmm. seen them goofing off sometimes, but that's like you know, cool, you know, condition, you know, just chill. 
Yeah, you got to blow off steam. You know, and that's fine. That's not like a training issue. What, what, I've never seen like a guy in the military, like the American Army, uh, Marines, or any of those, or anywhere that are, is currently in a war zone. Except that Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Well, <laughs> it's not that scary to <laughs> freaking shoot an M60 at a pirate. like Because all the pirates got is a freaking AK, and you're sitting there in your helicopter. Hey, stop. Oh, he's not stopping. <laughs> And the boat just sinks. You know, it's not that scary. Did you see that National Guard? It was a National Guard that hopped on that submarine, right? Did you see that? It was like a makeshift no. submarine. You remember that? No, video? I guess so. Makeshift submarine or yeah. whatever. With a guy. This National Guard jumps off a boat. This guy's a man, all right? Mm. He jumps off his friendly boat, jumps onto this, uh, like, cartel submarine or mm. whatever it was, starts pounding on the door. Open the f- up! You know, open the fuck up! Mm. Keeps pounding on it with his bare hands. Like, you know, and that's enough. Yeah, they get them. They, like, yeah. pull them over and everything. It was hilarious how manly that was. But don't get me wrong. Like, I like the National Guard, but uh, I don't know. If I was to join, I'd probably, I don't know. I'm kind of lazy. I'd like the National Guard. I'd yeah. be chill just to chill out at home. <laughs> yeah. But then again, you know, it's like apparently I'm less armed, so I think I'd do better as a home you know, guard. the more I've learned... About, like, a lot of the ways that, unfortunately, our military is run nowadays. I'm glad that I did not join the military. I know that right. sounds awful. Right, well... But, so, both in Iraq and Af- Afghanistan, we, we didn't go in there to win. We went in good at first, and then we come up with all these rules of engagement, all this crap that made it impossible for us to win, mm-hmm. just like in Vietnam, and... It ended up getting more of our people killed. We still have people over there to this day. And they're not, you know, we're not at war in Afghanistan anymore. But now they're combat advisors. Right. They're, okay. They're training people. Um, uh, yeah. But when you're, when you're over there, you still get shot at. Yeah. And so you're still fighting. They might not call it a war, but you're still fighting. Right. And so... I just have a real problem with the way things have been run with that. Well, and I think that's intentional because I wrote, I've mentioned it a few times, I wrote the long paragraph, I need to go ahead and find it and re-release it, uh, a long set of paragraphs called the America's Only Weakness, and it was, you know, in every war, starting from 1776, through the Civil War, through everything, uh, we were winning. We were in the war, we won the war, and we were done with it. You know, whatever the profits of the war was, we took. Uh, That ended after World War II. Because after World War II, the world saw America as the hero. They put a stop to Germany's expanse over Europe. And, well, you know, maybe not single-handedly, but, you know, America looked like the good guys because, you know, everyone knew the Soviet Union were dicks. (laughs) You know, nobody liked the Soviet Union. So America was the hero, the policeman of the world. So a lot of countries started calling on America. Hey, so the next war that came up after World War II was Korea. This is where things got a little weird. So you, again, you have this foreign war. We aren't affiliated with Korea in, you know, 1950, whatever, whenever it started, like 1952. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, but uh, Korea begins and we, 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 um, we fight for a while. And then Korea puts up a pretty good fight. North Korea puts up a pretty good fight because they have backup from China. Mm-hmm. Just like Vietnam. Sure. You know, but that, this is before Vietnam. Uh, we, they, they have backup from China. And you know, at that point when we realize, oh, they have China. They have China's help. Well, we decide, well, okay. We're going to let them have the north part and you guys can have the south part. And of course, the south is like... Well, you know, uh, how come we're not just going to completely wipe them out and, you know, have all this for us? You know, the free Korea, the free United Korea. And the politicians and everything in America were like, well, it's not really our war anyways. We're just going to pull out. I'm like, well, that's kind of sad because we lost a lot of men in Korea. This is a forgotten war. Nobody talks about it. And so this really comes to fruition, this new tactic of getting in shit and not not finishing it mm-hmm. has been a theme ever since Korea. Because yeah. we got in Vietnam, the South are getting their butts handed to them more or less, and you know Vietnam War is hard. And eventually, uh, we, you know, the politicians again, 
the men leading the military, you know, Lyndon B. Retard and everything else, are like, hey, uh, you know, you can't shoot until the enemy shoots at you. Or all these other rules of crap. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same thing going on today. Oh, you can't do that because that's inhuman. You know, you can't fire on that because you're not sure. And Well, while that's all fine and good, there's a point in war where it's like, you know what? I'm going to just take the bet and I'm going to save my ass. At the very least, save your ass, you know. And so after Vietnam, uh, you have the Desert Storm. Same thing uh, with the puppet thing we've been doing in, since like the 70s where we... We overthrow a dictator, uh, we put a, another guy in there, mm -hmm. and then, you know, that guy is either bad or he gets wiped out by the local populace, and then it's just a back and forth of like, no, that's not what we wanted. But none of it, nowadays, is about winning. It's about playing a game of, like, it's like war game. It's all about like, well, let's see what we can do to uh, get this much. No, no, no. War is about, you messed with us, we're taking all. That's mm -hmm. what we did in World War II. You messed with us, here's a nuke. You know what, here's two. <laughs> well, and since World War II, see, everything hasn't actually been officially called a war either. No. They were police actions. That's very interesting, huh? They, yeah, they didn't want to say, oh, we're not declaring war on such and such. Uh, their, their Vietnam, especially, was a police action. And there weren't, they weren't battles, they were scrimmages. Right. And, you know, it's, it's just kind of weird. Uh, George Orwell, a quote from him uh, about 1984, the future and everything. The, yep. wars, uh, the wars going on are not made to end, they are made to last. They, they are made to continue without end. And the way he put it, it was, you know, the war is for profit. And I, I do believe that very much so, that there's... You know, that there's gun deals and everything going on, that they're training. <laughs> I, IT just smacked his knee on the table. <laughs> that feel good, IT. I'm okay. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it's just these wars going on are like made to prolong, last, and they're not made to be won, not made to end. Yeah. And, the you know, it's to gain support and to just keep people blind and... Honestly, I think there's a there's a real premise to like having all our boys, the boys who, you know, mo I'm going to be honest, most of the military, I mean, not all of it, don't get me wrong, but most of the military is right wing, conservative, you know, American values. That's why they join the army. You know, they, they, they believe in their head, I'm going to fight for freedom. Right. And, you know, they're heroes. Don't get me wrong. I'm not dissing the military. Like, I, I, I get a lot of crap because I talk all these, you know, tactics and everything, but I'm not a military man. And they're like, well, you're just, you know, you're just talking out your ass. I'm like, well, that's fair. <laughs> I've never been in a shootout or anything like that. Um, but the thing is, it's like, I think there's a premise of the deep state of keeping our defense forces, the people who might actually fight the free, you know, the, the elite state of keeping all our boys, especially the highly trained ones that are still in the active service as far away from the United States as possible. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, I think it's very common, especially with, like, Green Berets, people who uh, are, you know, honorably discharged or whatever, they leave the military and they, like, you know, they go home to their family and everything and they're highly trained. It's like they're on a watch list. The, you know, the government is watching them. Mm. Because it's like the, you know, they, they're watching the government because they know the government's tricks and lies to get them to do what they say. So, right. You know, almost every military guy I met, they're not right or left. They're very much like no BS, tell it how it is. You know, closest thing, a lot of them identify as libertarians for the most part because they're, they're sick of being told factions and like propaganda because they know what it is. They know when they're being then there's, told. Then there's guys like poor Chris Kyle that gets back and gets Sh murdered in, shot in, the in face. a weird way that I still think is kind of iffy. Right, know, it is weird. As, like, yeah. you know, because him, he was outspoken against Obama. Yeah, Chris he, Kyle was. Yeah, he didn't like Obama, and no. he didn't like uh, he didn't like the deep state. He was, and yeah. you know, you're talking about somebody who, if he wanted to, you know, he can put a round through your head and. At almost a mile, so right. maybe they found him a little bit too much of a threat. So take him and, you know, uh, just with a hunting buddy. This is the official story. He goes out with a yeah. hunting buddy. This highly trained sniper 
gets shot in the face by a guy who has PTSD and just happened to have an episode while hunting. I don't know. That is a little bit of a far fetch. I don't, I, I don't know. That's was it weird. hunting? Yeah, it was a hunting accident, I believe. Which reminds me, I actually read a story about Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney shot one of his friends in the face with a shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know about that. You do. Yeah, that was. Uh, That's old news, you know. We're it kind was of a, actually a, it was a ways away. Yeah, it like, didn't like so blast didn't, his brains like, out. He didn't just... kill a guy <laughs> because he just got peppered. Yeah, that was back. Two thousand. Was, was like two thousand seven. Oh, six. 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 Okay. Yeah, I read it recently. Yeah. I was like, yeah, oh, crap. yeah I, remember, I remember when that happened because they were, man, Dick Cheney was the whole like at the time they they nicknamed the libs nicknamed him Darth Vader because he was so evil. Right, and he did that, so they tried to all make fun of him the whole time. So well, it was funny. I'm gonna be oh, honest. they did. They had some good Saturday Night Live skits over it. They really did. Yeah, I just I know it's a bit unrelated, but speaking of hunting accidents, I remember Dick Cheney. Like, there's a meme I sh- like I saw. I had no knowledge of it prior that he shot his friend in the face with a shotgun. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think. We should call it a break. We've got some more stuff to talk about, and I think we could use a quick little refresher, not too long, of uh, just a little, just a little moment of peace, and uh, we'll go ahead, and, you know, refresh, and we'll start talk. We'll talk about more about gas masks and narwhal tusks in England, and what was another topic? Yeah, we'll get to it. All we'll right, go ahead and uh, mute us there. I too. Be back in a minute.
Back. Hello everybody, we're back from a little break, got some water, got some things, got a little refreshed. Uh, so it was a shooting range that Chris Kyle got shot on. That's what uh, War Spirit looked up here real quickly. Uh, not a hunting accident, it was a shooting range, which yep. is even more bizarre. Yep. Uh, I mean, like, usually at shooting range, someone will be like, whoa, 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 and like charge and tackle, you know, because they got people on, like, standby. I mean, maybe it was just like one of well, those kind of Well, they did, like, they did. Stop him after he blew Kyle. freaking Chris's brains out. Yeah. Because uh, one of one of Chris's friends was there with him too, and Chris's buddy is the one that uh, stopped him. But uh, yeah, I remember it was a it was a rough deal. That's ridiculous. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of controversy surrounding uh, or conspiracy rather surrounding Mr. Kyle. There is a lot going on. But as for what, I don't know. It was enough to make a whole movie out of that guy. It was a pretty good movie, too. Yeah, it was that good. Low budget, but it was really good. Um, and if anything, I mean, it's good for the Kino aspect. Like, I actually enjoyed that film. They need more really good, like, uh, real-based war movies. Um, so what we're going to get into. Uh, in England, uh, a Polish man... There was a recent attack. Uh, there was a recent attack of a jihadi in England on one of the bridges over there. You know, London Bridge. There's like twenty of them. <laughs> Are they falling down? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Dude, it's always on these bridges. These these guys start acting up with machetes and stuff and cutting off cops' heads. Have you heard about that? Well, England's. I mean, you know, I got relatives that visited England just like in the last four days. I was talking to them. I was like. You're not in the States. And they're like, nope, we're in England. <laughs> I was like, okay. And uh, they were like, well, it's not as bad as like the media in America makes it out to be. I'm like, or is it just like, you know, like you guys just don't know. You know what it's I mean? It's not like, as bad as you make it out to be. You know, only one or two people die a day. It's yes, enough it's of, not of a big jihadis. You know, it's it's only, you know, what was it? It's like 30 rape cases a day. Yeah. It's and enough. that's always hidden. Like, I wouldn't want to be in England, at well, least from what I've heard. Well, Vigilance, you know, you talked about the rape. Well, if they're um, infidels, they were asking for it. Yeah, I know, right? Like, just uh, saying, you know. Just saying, yeah, and that's how it is uh, over there. And the mayor refuses to do anything about it. This is the cost of living in a big city. And yeah. if you didn't know, the mayor of London is a Pakistani, uh, <laughs> and that just kind of writes its own letter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this isn't a big deal. Calm down. Well, anyways, this attack happened on the bridge, and a Polish man jumps out of his car and is armed with a freaking narwhal tusk. And if you don't know what a narwhal is, apparently that's common that people don't know what that is. That's a animal that lives in the ocean in, like, Antarctica regions, and they have huge, like... It's like, like a seal with like a unicorn tusk. Yeah, it's it's like yeah. a it's a whale with like a unicorn tusk, and the unicorn tusk is like, uh, what'd you say about like ten feet long? It's a freaking huge thing. This it's Polish like a spear. Dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a winged hussar. What do they like use them for? Like in the wild, do they fight each other with them? They uh they do that and they hit, poke their prey. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, imagine they can't even reach it. It's just stuck on their right. head forever. Uh, like, I've been trying to get this thing to shake down. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how it works, but I'm pretty sure they use it for fighting, like to cap capture food. Yeah, strange thing God created. Maybe it's like a like a mating thing, too. It's like, hey, baby. Right. Look at the size of my tusk. <laughs> they say size doesn't matter, but I'm a pea, pea brain sized animal, so it does. Right. Oh. Kick it out. Anyways, this Polish dude straight up with another English hero runs at this jihadi. Uh, this other English hero, uh, fire extinguisher, sprays the jihadi down. And then this freaking uh, dude with the narwhal tusk spears the guy. I don't know if it penetrates, but he like knocks him down and starts like slamming it on him like a baseball bat. Whap! Whap! But it's enough to get the... Uh... So, there's some controversy around this again. Because, uh, you know, in England, the political correctness is nuts. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like California down there, in London anyways. And everyone's always worried about it. The cop, uh, so as an understanding, this guy, this jihadi, was claiming he had an explosive vest on. Yep. So the officer had him on the ground, 
And, you know, he was on the ground. He was disabled. He's on the ground, yep. and he's still shouting about this vest. So the officer takes out, like, was it a shotgun or something? Just straight up puts it, one in his face. It looked to, to me like an MP5. Either way, they killed yeah. the guy. Yeah, they got, he shot, shot the head. guy, and yeah. everyone is losing their shit. You killed the man. You you killed him. He was disabled. That's not fair. That's not right. And I'm like, well, one, you know, that's a good way to make sure he doesn't detonate. Right. Two, he just stabbed two people. Yep. You know, on camera. Yep. Proven. You know, so like, were you as upset when he stabbed your fellow countrymen? Of yep. course not, because. Well, this is a, another writing I did called Leftism Isn't About Communism and It Isn't About Socialism as much as it is. It's about hating your own country. Right. It's it's bizarre. It's about hating your own country. And so, you know, the leftists, America, London, wherever, in these first world countries, they aren't railing on Saudi Arabia for torturing gays and women. They aren't railing on China for executing Muslims. They aren't railing on any country but their own. It's all about hating their own country. They're railing on America for, you know, not letting uh, people into the borders. But they they don't care that um, literally every other country isn't really allowing it, other than, of course, the European Union countries. Uh, they don't rail on the other countries because it's all about sabotaging the free system they live in. It's all about sabotaging uh, God, morality, and freedom. You know, it's uh, which are all pretty much one. Right. You know, it, it's like the holy trinity of man's concept of how to live a happy life, which is, in this order, God, morality, and freedom. And so the, the leftist establishment is anti-everything that has anything to do with those three. Which, of course, as an American, that's like the tenets of what being an American is. But at the same time, I'm not saying you have to believe in God to be an American. Don't misunderstand me. You have to believe in God to be, you know, a Christian. But you don't have to be, uh, you know, because American is different than a religious thing. I'm not trying to make a state out of that. But anyways, uh, everything the left does is anti-God, anti-freedom, uh, anti-morality. Killing babies is something the left pushes. Uh, apparently, you know... T uh, underage drag queens and strip clubs is not a big deal to them. They think that's a very th good thing to be proud of. Epstein and his whole charade could be called left, mm -hmm. and it's all about dismantling society, really. Right. It's about like just uh, returning to animalistic behaviors. So uh, that's all that. So keep your eyes open on London. There's a lot of weird stuff going on there. Uh, gas masks. We actually I have one with us today. I do have a story I want to tell you real quick, John. Mm -hmm. um, this would be a, a good bef before we segue into the gas masks. Mm -hmm. um, so, got off work today, and uh, I uh, I drive a company vehicle home. And uh, but bef before I got off today, I was I was clearing some some tumbleweeds out of out of our facility, and. Some tumbleweeds ended up getting wrapped around my undercarriage and my driveline. Right. No big deal, right? Eh, yeah. They'll fall out on the road. No harm, no foul. I went around, did all my stuff, and um, at the end of the day, um, locked up the, the shop and um, got in the old truck and started heading home. Well, got all the way up to uh, Crouch Mesa. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they, there's, a, there's a big uh, 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 Mennonite uh, community right yeah, there. Yeah, 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 okay. right there, yeah. So I start smelling somebody burning something. I was like, man, these Mennonites are getting, somebody's got a wood stove and they're cranking it. You're right. You know, I look at the, I look at the thermometer. It's 43 degrees. I'm like, hell. It's not that cold to be cranking their wood stove, but it like right. reeks of wood. <laughs> and and, th and this is a God thing, okay? God actually saved me. Because usually I turn at Dino's and go down Andrea mm -hmm. um, to go into Farmington. Right, yeah. To my house. Um, well, I went the wrong way, and I went towards, like, where that traffic jam is, you know? And I'm like, yeah. oh, crap. So I pull over on the side of the road to make a U-turn. Mm -hmm. When I stop, my truck fills with smoke. 
I'm like, what the hell? I jump out of my truck. The tumbleweeds are on fire underneath my truck <laughs> from the friction of the driveless shaft. Right. It a friction fire made from those tumbleweeds, and it was a raging man. <laughs> oh my god! And I'm like, ah! Right. So I jump in the back of my truck. I grab a 20 pound fire extinguisher that right. I just happened to have back there. Jump back down and blow out the fire with right, it. Right. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Now, children. Pull, squeeze, sweep. Right. <laughs> and I and I smothered the fire out, and then I went and grabbed my gloves and got on and I pulled the chunks of tumbleweed out of my drive <laughs> shaft that were still like partially mm-hmm. smoldering, and then got a cup of, cup of coffee that I had in the the cup holder in a half bottle of water, and I poured that on it and mixed right. it all around. Sprinkle, stir, sprinkle. Um, and yeah, so. Uh, it was. It was Smokey the freak. Bear came out and gave you a hug. Yeah, it was freaking crazy, man. So uh, I, I was a firefighter today, and actually, it smells like smoke inside my yeah. truck. It rode with me over to was, the gas station. I was like, wait, it smells like. I was like, I was. That's why I asked if you smoked one. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was like, did you guys smoke? Yeah. I was like, did you guys smoke like a cigarette on your way up here? It smelled like a fresh cigarette. I was like. Man, it smells like something burning in here, you know. Yeah. Because that like, that's what I said, too. I was like, man, I like slapped your car. I was like, man, that smoke is really getting in your truck, man. You might want to slow down. <laughs> but, like, now, you know, now I realize that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's car was the, almost on the inside. Fire. The inside is saturated with that smell. It's probably going to smell like that for days. That's funny, man. Yeah, that's so funny. That's My a favorite thing part of that story it. was, man, one of these Mennonites has your stove <laughs> ripping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so what I told him. Dude. I was like, they're ripping. I just started crying. I was like, because <laughs> like, I live in the general. Like, I, I drive through that area a lot. So right. like in the mornings, like, yeah. uh, there's like it's like a haze over mm-hmm. everything. It's just smoke. Because it is. They, they everybody they, uses like they rip their stones. Yeah, man. Yeah. And there's just this haze over the <laughs> over the land. It's blessed. It's blessed. Yeah, yeah. It's blessed. With the Mennonite smoke, they burn sandals. Those skinwalker bitches, they come nowhere near this town. <laughs> if they do, they better buy some pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta explain now. What the heck? They have a huge uh, bake sale down there, and they all oh. they, they make a whole bunch of bakers out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, so okay. they better buy a pie. <laughs> I've heard they have this pretty bomb desserts. When I was uh, uh, when I was really looking for a girl, I always wanted to infiltrate the Mennonites cuz I know they're curious, you know. Like, I mean, I, I'm pretty good little traditional Christian, but yeah. I know they'd be like, "Oh my gosh, he's so dreamy, so bad." He's really bad. He's really, really bad. <laughs> really bad. It's a bad day, bad. I know probably I, the old ladies would be like, "I haven't felt the I'm not even going to go there." I was gonna say, well, I, I know that there's like a whole bunch of like, um, like pedophilia in like I've heard like really? in the Mennonites in Amish communities. Oh, in um, Amish, both. Like, like I've heard like like liking little kids. Yeah, and the wives because they're supposed to be relative. I mean, relatively right. submissive, but I mean yeah. it's one of those things like they had it happen to them, and so now it's just. Through wow. the whole, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's it's meritable. Like if there's any truth to right. it, but it could just be you know like hate I, campaign. Hearsay. But, I yeah. have heard in some Amish communities because they you know you can only marry an Amish. Yeah, that there's like hell a ton of like inbreeding. Yeah, right. Like because there's no more for the gene pool here, exactly, guys. Yeah. Right. It, it, <laughs> Pools closed <laughs> <laughs> due to incest. <laughs> Like, I've, heard, I've heard it's kind of a serious issue. And it, but, like, when you think about it, though, it kind of makes sense, though, you know, given their tight-knit community and, you know, you really rarely hear any complaints come out of the Amish community whatsoever. Yeah. Nobody comes out of there, like, yeah. freaking out. But, I mean, also that that comes right to fruition in the same situation where it's like nobody tell you has what's come out. There's a lot of uh, sexual deviance and, like, crazy stuff going on. And there's a lot of really good documentaries about those uh, Scientologists. I thought she was going to say Jeffrey Epstein. Well, there's that, but we've already discovered that. <laughs> you know, I, I honestly haven't really looked into the Scientologists. Scientologists are... Uh... It, it's kind of like a pagan kind of 
style religion, is it? I would call it the I would call it rich people paganism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't really researched the all the like celebrities and like stuff we're getting into. It's weird. Yeah, Tom like, Cruise needs to come out of the closet. Yeah, already. Tom Cruise. Like, and I mean, yeah, there's really no like rule set for Scientologists. It's just they believe the certain thing, but they're also very very restrictive with information to like their followers so like yeah um and you're there's certain levels and you have to actually pay money to get to the next level it's like expensive. exactly the uh yeah. i think there's some of the elite kind of like secret society stuff going on because everyone in like scientology like i said is like stupid fucking rich yeah like they're really rich you look like you're tired there it yeah i'm getting there it's been a yeah. long week yeah, me too. <laughs> Especially on the long part. Anyways. Um, that was dope. That's what she said. Right. Um, I'm kind of losing my train of thought. Anyways, so for an example, like a, there's a documentary about Scientology, and it was like an older couple was in like the Scientology church thing, got a quote church, and they, uh, they lived in a compound. I was, like, completely fenced off. Nobody could get in. Nobody could get out. You know, and uh, they got uh, mailed a, you know, a nook. One of those books. Yeah. And like, uh, e-book things where yeah. you can, like, read the books electronically. Yeah, yeah. And that thing had an internet browser. And, like, for the first time in, like, years and years and years, these people, like, got on the internet. And that's what convinced them they had to get out of this. Because mm. they were like, this is nuts. And this is how the world sees it. And... They were like, they never saw it that way, you know, and I was like, wow, I didn't think Scientology was like, like that, you know, there's hmm. compounds that people are living on that they don't know yeah. any better. It's like, take Mormonism and like, put it on steroids, because it's nuts, it's just as nuts as Mormonism, but like, even more so, <laughs> which is pretty hard, it's pretty crazy when you top Mormonism, but at least they don't claim to like, believe in like, Jesus or anything. You yeah. Know? Scientologists, they don't like, they're not Christian oriented, they're just... Scientologists. They're just Scientologists. The L. Ron Hubbard, the uh, the UFO man. He's nuts. He's bad. He's really a goofball. But getting back to the... Kiss me. So, John, mm-hmm. we uh, we might have to pray over you and, and some of your friends. <laughs> um, John here, he's a, he's a big fan of uh, all things Soviet. Not and, like policy, but like equipment. Yeah, equipment, yeah. <laughs> and so we started talking about gas masks for the, the podcast. And I was like, yeah, I got a gas mask. And he's like, yeah, I got this really cool Russian one. And I was like, oh, yeah. Now I figured, I'm like, yeah, that's too Looks cool. just like the one on the picture, by the way, GP5. Yep, typical John. I feel like uh, I can laugh, kind of give myself a chuckle. So I started doing some research for us for the podcast today on gas masks and one of the first things that come up on the Russian gas masks, because I was kind of curious, you know, on their, their effectiveness, and one of the first things that come up is uh, people uh, actually getting can- lung cancer and stuff from the, uh, the canisters, because apparently I had the filter. And so uh, I let my buddy John know here via messenger that he uh, might not want to... You have lung me. cancer! <laughs> <laughs> that was basically what it was. Yeah, you're dead! <laughs> So, uh, so, so, get so, just so, crap. <laughs> so just so you guys know, the, the, the old uh, Russian style looking gas mask, they might look cool. And I guess you could use them like for a costume. But if you are, get a dummy um, a canister to wear from it. Uh, with the 40 internals. millimeter NATO will work just fine. Will it? It will. It uh, will. That it will type right on. there would fit, yes. Okay, so don't get a com block filter then, I guess. Don't do it. I still would, I've done some, like, reading on them. I still would, like, kind of not really trust the mask as far as, like, effectively actually using it. Because they were saying if they're more than 10 years old, um, that the rubber like could start, could start decaying yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I looked online several different deals. And what you're gonna want is one that is for like that's ANSI certified, um, but also uh, the, your biochemical war, uh, war uh, certified that takes the 40 millimeter NATO. Um, one of the best deals I found is uh, from a company called Myrid, and in fact, uh, it on the uh, the podcast photos. If you'll move that. Uh, the is today today to the, to the to the left. There's a little file, right there at the bottom. 
Mm. Yep. And bring that up, and there should... Well, no, that's not you good. two photos or anything? Okay. Where's the podcast photo? It should say podcast oh, photo. Oh, yeah, it's somewhere on the desktop there. Get, oh, I don't know how I got... Put on my gas I have no idea how it got moved. Here, we can just try... Podcast picks. There you go. Um, so Is that, that what you want? That, yeah. So that gas mask right there. This one. Yes. The CM dash six M, I believe. Yeah, CM dash six CM dash six M. Um, that's one of the best deals I found. It's actually can be bought on Amazon. The cool thing about this is it comes with the canteen and the Here, hose. Let me let me let me pull up a picture real quick so the audience can see. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. I thought. No, no, no. It's it's okay. It's okay. I could I could start moving it over to see desktop, but you have private information. So yeah, yeah, I, figured that I appreciate best, that. Yeah, I could do that, but what am no, I doing? Just, uh, yeah, just import it. Yeah, I'm speaking through a gas mask right now, if you can hear it. Yeah, yeah, no. This is actually a pretty cool gas mask. It, it reminds me a lot of the Israeli model I used to have. Um, yeah, it's sick. I think that's actually what that is. It's a copy. <laughs> this? It looks like oh, a well, Slavic sorry, replica sorry. of some kind. Uh, yeah. It it looks American, honestly. I think it actually is American, and this one yeah. does. It's have, got the American goggles. And this one does have the adapter right here. I just never bought the hose to be able to drink out of it. Right, and the Israeli ones I had, they both had the water hoses thing. That's great. Well, you know, and it was really cool because um, so back in the day, uh, to say the c word Chernobyl, I, I when I was living in Colorado is when I first picked up this Chernobyl craze. So I bought gas masks. I mean, all kinds of stuff, because I was going to Chernobyl in my head, you know, I was like, I was you know, at the age of like 14, I'm like, I'm going, mom. <laughs> so I bought gas masks, and uh, the Israeli ones really caught my eye, and I would be, so I would travel the forests and stuff, which was very similar to like Slavic country, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed, you know, drinking out of the water through my gas mask, and I hiked in a gas mask. It do, ain't easy, do but... You, do you, you know. know that there is a... Uh... Unfortunately, it's in California, and so I'll never do it. But there's a marathon that uh, – they're mostly all ex-military, but there are some guys that aren't that do it – that they do every year that they run in a gas mask. So it's like a half marathon wow. in a gas mask. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. Because it, it does granted, restrict airflow. Granted, it's at sea level, but well, still. Would, yeah, I'd probably be okay – but, like, I mean, the heat and everything. And like, ugh. Yeah. That'd still be miserable. <laughs> but I would only be okay go, because it's okay. so, Sorry about that. That took a little while. That's okay. So what I do like about this model, the CM-6M, is if you'll notice it, it's a full face mask. So there's no, like, uh, the one that I have have goggles that you have to look out of it. So it, it, it restricts your, your, your sight. Whereas this one has, like, almost This one's full face, yeah. yeah. Um, and VR. this is one of the only... <laughs> models that you can actually get a good cheek weld on an m4 slash m16 slash ar15 for our civilians um you can actually get a chick cheek weld with this gas mask so you could actually shoot out of iron sights with this gas mask if you wanted to um it's got two ports for a 40 millimeter nato um can which you can't see because it's not they're not on there but they're they would be on the left and the right so the thought process of it is is you can have one can on whatever opposite side of where you usually shoulder your weapon, so it's so it's out right. of the way. And what you do is say you're in that area for longer than eight hours, because that's about all this can's going to be good worth worth the, the the filter is. You can spin on another can and then spin off the bad one. And and, and and you don't have to hold your breath yeah. to change canisters. That way you can have a new can on there. Now you it's going to be on the bad side now. So what you can actually do now is if you do have enough, like say you had a supply. An extra spare. Yeah. You could just... Go ahead and spin on another one, then spin off the one that you just put on, and then it'll you're be, and then be you can just use a dirty filter yeah. from then on. Yeah, or, you, uh, just, yeah you just use a bad filter yeah. from then on to do that. Um, so that way you never have to take off, theoretically take off your mask. Yeah, you don't have to hold your breath to change filters. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. This one, you have to take a deep breath, and then the best way they do it uh, from studies that I've shown is right before you start spinning on to start slowly exhaling, slowly, as you're turning it back on. And then that way you can ensure that you're not going to get any, uh, there's no gas in between yeah. here. Right. Yeah, that's true, because it pushes it through that filter. Right. Yeah, again. so yeah. you, and then you, right. yeah. 
I'd probably screw it on and then blow yeah. out. Well, that's that. Yeah, that's what. Well, it's still like, like right there. Oh, like right. There. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. So to just, put into perspective what we're showing, he's screwing on a filter. It's about like a mask. quarter of the way. It's a quarter of the way, and then go. Yeah. One thing you guys need to re uh, realize with the gas mask is uh, when you you need to store it in a in a fashion that's easy to get it on, and you need to train with your gas mask because um, just like anything else, it, when the fit hits the shan. Um, you can't tell me that you're going to be able to take this gas mask and put it on in and, a panic. Yeah, and operate okay? a firearm after that. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially like say they say they say they shoot CS gas at you. This and I mean this has become a prevalent thing again. Look at the Hong Kong protests. protests okay, they're using tear gas. A lot gas of those poor people, and, man, they're using like industrial, like horrible gas masks. They're, they're I mean, they're not. Like they're basic. Not, they're like, just respirators. Yeah. They're not even gas masks. They're meant to like filter dust. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's what they're these poor Chi Chinese people are using to combat the man. Um, but so, cool thing about a forty millimeter NATO is uh, they do come sealed, and if they're sealed. And they and oh another thing too. So they come with expiration dates. Hmm. Okay, that's nice. Um, to know at least. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than oh, and if it's, they're it's if gone. they're if they're really really old, the the one that's made for biological chemical warfare, do not inhale one that's really old. I actually got a lung infection when I was younger with one of these. Really? Yes, yeah. because they were past the the, the expiration the expiration date, and I got really sick. But there are also ones that are just good enough for. Uh, yeah. They take the image off? Yeah, you're good yeah. to go. Um, that one right there, guys, you are going to pay for it. It's 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 about 220 bucks, but that is the best bang for the buck that you're going to get right, right. now. Right. If you want your peripheral, they're yeah. going to be kind of like that, the best possible. That's one of the better yeah. ones. Um, and it comes yeah. with the drink system and everything already. Most of your other, uh, your other uh, gas masks, right. you're going to right now, you're going to pay almost that. Plus, you got to pay another $70, $80 for the drink system. Right. So that's a really good deal. It's on Amazon right now, free shipping. Um, but anyways, like I was going to say, so you can get the uh, the 40 millimeter canisters that are just good for CS. And the ones that are good for CS um, are going to have the 003 and then the AB-1 on the top of the can. You can leave that on there all the time, and it doesn't really have an expiration date. It'll be good for CS gas, like until like it gets full of cs i mean right. you once you start you're in your in cs gas is tear gas guys if you ever if you don't want to know what that is a lot of times that's what uh a government agency or whatever CS, use. cry sad cry sad <laughs> it that's 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 what they'll use to try to disperse you or whatever right so you can keep this like say in your truck or your bug out truck or whatever under the seat and say alphabet boy tries to shoot a tear gas Christ around Christ. into your truck you just stick on your old gas mask and sit there and smile at him and give him the finger. Right. <laughs> then I'll just, uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, riot scenarios, have you guys seen that photo where the dude got the smoke grenade in his skull? Yeah. Or the CS or... gas skull. No, it was yeah. CS gas. He got, got the cry brain. smoke in the noggin? Yeah, he got the cry spice in the noggin because uh, it penetrated his freaking head. That was in, uh, pa what was that? Was it Palestine? Was it Pakistan? Are they having? Yeah. No, uh, Iraq. Excuse me. They're having huge like riots in Iraq right now. Well, a lot of those. Uh, the prime minister stepped down recently, did he? Uh, I don't know, but anyways, they're the having like, a lot did. of riots step, that way, down. and they nailed this guy in the face with a freaking CS gas canister. Yeah. Could you imagine getting nailed in the face and your brain just starts cooking? Yeah. Goodness gracious, that Sounds is hot. Yeah. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> My brain it burns. Yeah. That's all I got on gas masks. Guys, do you have anything else to add on gas masks? Well, John? you know, obviously, don't buy Soviet comm block stuff, <laughs> where you might uh, very well just get lung AIDS, as uh, we talked about. Yep. Uh, you just start filling up with water. It's cancer. It's very yeah. important to breathe. So, so yeah. if you all about getting bug out gear, I would recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you smoke you a cigarette lung. through the water thing on a gas? It's <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> The easiest way to waste a filter. Yeah. Oh, God. Could you even imagine? You just breathe in your... <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Dude, speaking Instant of Instant ass. You know, when you uh you know, when you talk about like gas masks, it's like you get two people. You got the people who are like, Oh yeah, tactical, you know. Like what what's that good for? Um, so the CS gas filter, considering that like so say radiation, the main threat of why you'd want to wear a respir- respirator during like a nuclear crisis. Uh, a nuclear fuels. power plant melts down. <laughs> Mention it again. But anyways, <laughs> uh, the main thing is, I think this, uh, so you're saying, you know, CS gas for this. Yep. That'll last you a while. That's what that one's built for. That one um, will take eight hours of CS gas. I bet um, that it's filtered enough. It's probably even better than, you know, the surgical mask. Because sure. in like uh, a scenario like uh, cesium-137, which is... Uh, this 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 will do biologicals too, like uh, hunt the virus, uh, diseases like that. Right. It will filter diseases out too. That's very good. Yeah. And so that's what I was saying. It's like usually like with dust or infection, like things that you, you know, that have to like go directly in your lungs to take effect, that would probably be pretty good. Yeah. But like, uh, how, how about like... Um, you know, some of like the like the hardcore gases, like um, even just like World War One chlorine. Do you think this would? Oh yeah, that would you? that would that would protect you against mustard okay, gas. This would uh, protect you against chlorine and mustard gas. Yeah, okay, because you just said CS gas. The, yeah. the 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 major thing that this one won't do, and that's why it's because uh, it doesn't have that extra charcoal layer for the radiation and stuff. Right. Is it won't protect you against radiation. It won't. This one will not. So that's what I was looking at because it was like, you know, I'm like, but they it, wear it'll it. save but you from breathing can, solid particles. Yeah, but, solid yeah, particles, right. yeah, but, which is the main threat. But I mean, if it's all I had and I'm afraid radiation's there, yeah. I'd go ahead and throw her off. I mean, because, to, yes, the dust know, is. Uh, it's got to be get, better than nothing. If you get radiation dust in your lungs, it ain't yeah. going to come out. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, you know, yeah. it's bad. Uh, it's bad. It's really bad. But I have can, a sun in my lungs. It's really big. But you can buy the, oh, yeah, the 40 millimeter cans that will do the radiation. But here's the thing: one 40 millimeter NATO can that's that is nuclear biological certified. Yeah. 80 bucks. Hmm. Freaking heck, man! I wonder how long it's even like good. And for. it's only good for 10 years. Okay. Well, how about like you know? There are some on Amazon right now uh, that are that were made in uh, the the. They were made in 2017. Hmm. So 17, 18, 19, you know, you almost got three years gone already, though, for 80 right. bucks. Damn. That's hard, man. It's yeah. hard buying gas mask stuff. Um, another thing I want to uh, add, uh, so talking about nuclear, uh, say a nuclear scenario happened, and you, you got your trusty gas mask, and you got the right filter and everything. The problem is, is that is going to protect your lungs, but unless you actually have a full like MVC outfit, suit, yeah. um, you're still going to get rid rads. Okay? Right, and you know that's what I was saying. It's like to protect your lungs is very important. That is the most important, right. and also because also you want to be protecting your uh, your lymph nodes, glands. You're right. Your um, thyroid. Yeah, your yeah. I'm sorry. Your thyroid. Um, you can take uh, what's called potassium iodate. Right. Tablets. And that will that will help protect yeah. your thyroid. I, uh, iodine tablets. Uh, this even the Soviets did that, and you know, like I said, Chernobyl and different other. Because you know, the Soviet Union was cracked with the with the nuclear shit. <laughs> and Everywhere. you said iodine. Okay, so yeah. there are two different ones. There's iodine and iodate. Right. You can take iodine, but it makes you severely sick to your stomach. Yeah, you have to be careful. Um, if you take potassium iodate, it's a little bit. Um, easier on your on your it stomach. It tastes better. <laughs> but one, tastes like bananas. I, <laughs> I bought one bottle because I, I was all into this too, like worried about it back yeah. in the Obama administration. And I bought a bottle of potassium iodate. It was eighty nine dollars for one bottle, and I had ten pills in it. That was good for two days. One yeah, because you have to take them like every few hours. You yeah. know, you have to you have to really stay on top of it, especially if you're rads. You know, your Geiger counter is going. <laughs> Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta stay yeah. on top of it. Um, and of course, like gas masks, a lot of films and everything, it's like, well, you know, you just live with the gas mask on when you're outside. It's That's not really how it works. Um, you really have to get out. Yeah. You have to these get are, out. Yeah. These are escape masks. Right. Yeah, these are run, buddy. But yeah, yeah, it's like run. you're going through somewhere or you're going like out of somewhere. Like it's yeah. never like, 
oh, I'll just stay in the area and right. then put it on when I need it. No, it's like, yeah. if you're in the area, it's on. Yeah. Like, this there's no... This isn't ends. stalker. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to be just cruising around yeah, no. with a gas mask. You just no. put it on when you need it's it. It's got safe protection. Now, it's granted, safe. granted... <laughs> it, it's got I, the bleeds it, in it. <laughs> it might be used also, like, in a uh, crap hits the fan scenario as an intimidation factor. Yeah. I mean, pop the I filter out of the, that. I come up over the hill and I yeah. see some homeboy like this and like maybe uh, wearing tidy whities man. I, I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say like hands. naked, like doing the helicopter, yeah. you know, like ah! yeah, right. you know, I might run the other way. Yeah. You got a gas mask and your dick doing the helicopter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you sure got pretty teeth, boy. What's this got pretty teeth, boy? Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> you sure got pretty teeth, boy. That's pretty spooky. That sounds pretty intimidating. Yeah. Damn, Darth Vader about to touch my butt. <laughs> Darth Vader. Yeah. Dark helmet. <laughs> <laughs> From space, space balls. Oh, space balls. Dark helmet. Yeah. Ludicrous speed. Uh, cool. Uh, we have a comment. That pick is cool. Thanks for commenting. Thank you for commenting. Thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, speaking of commenting, if you like what we're doing, like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure and click that little notification bell because we are not anywhere near big on YouTube. So that way it lets you know when we're podcasting. Yeah, it lets you know and we're ready to, you know, get going. And, you know, and, I mean, not, we're not leaving yet, but I mean, like, it'll help. Uh, so, you know, share uh, even yeah. if you know us and everything, you know, uh, <laughs> copy the link at the top of the URL. You know, if you're a boomer, you know, you, you highlight it all and you right click and you copy it and then you could go to Facebook and then right click where you want to put it and paste it, you know, yep. cause I know a lot of our audience is <laughs> pretty decrepit, you know, they're like, how do I turn the computer on? <laughs> and we just lost half our audience. No, I know, right? well, <laughs> how do I download more RAM? <laughs> Dude. It's just stars. It's just stars. Move your mouse. Oh! <laughs> did, did you see that uh, message I sent you one day on Messenger, like, that I saw on Facebook, like, comments? Yeah. There's this sweet old lady. Oh, yeah. She was you could tell mm -hmm. she was, like, a sweet old lady, but she was yeah. a boomer. And <laughs> I forgot what it was even about, but she was, like, she tells her, like, her son on comments. She's like, I don't use that computer, you know? And, you know, and, and he's like... Uh, Mom, you're you're using a computer. <laughs> well, I, I, I all I, I can do is on this phone is text and and be on Facebook. You do realize that a phone now is a computer, right? Right. Yeah, he was. It was funny. You know, I'll tell you a funny story about that war spirit. So I spent most of my like ever since I learned how to be a, use a computer at the age of like you know six. Yeah. I was I was pretty proficient at computers at a very young age and. Uh, I mean, I'm not as good as IT here, but, you know, I could do pretty basic stuff um, to advanced. You know, I could copy-paste and say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I taught my folks how to use a computer. My folks are both fairly, you know, aged. Uh, you know, they, they were around before computers were, like, in the house. Yeah. You know, and so... I taught them, and they got to the point where they could do pretty basic stuff on a computer. You know, a Windows PC. They could, yeah. You know, I could go a day without them being like, you know, hey, help me out. You know, it's going yeah. slow, or like, what do I need to do? What was the? This, this is kind of funny. What was the uh, first version of Windows you remember using? Uh, that would have been um, ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Yeah. See, I I started on DOS. MS DOS. Right. And my, my folks did too. Honestly. Okay, boomer. <laughs> That's right. Boomer, yeah. And anyways, my, my folks are actually better at DOS than they are normal computer, which I cracked me up. They're, I know. got a buddy of mine. He's a programmer, and uh, he loves DOS. And I tell him, he's actually a pretty fairly young guy. And I was like, man, you're a DOS man in a Windows world. Right. right. And <laughs> anyways, so like I got him to you know know how to use like Windows, you know XP and yeah. up. Pretty well. They could copy paste things. They you know, didn't have to ask me on like polls. how to email stuff, how to attach stuff, right. how to save stuff. It was nice. I it got was it. Steady going. And then my sister had a wonderful idea. Let's buy my mother. 
currently going through college, was used to using a Windows PC to get through college. An Apple? And everything. Yeah, buy an Apple. Oh, buy a MacBook. No. Buy a MacBook. Oh, no. Okay. This was a big brain moment, because now you had the technological genius of the house not know what the hell to do. Yeah, I'm not a Mac <laughs> guy. Like, I can yeah. work an iPhone, but even then, not, like, advanced. Like Yeah, I don't. I yeah, don't I don't do Macs. Macs. And so, like, the technological guy of the house, that local <laughs> IT, me, you know, my mom comes in. How do I copy paste on a Mac? I'm like, I don't have a clue. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Like, and you know that and whole how frustration. Long ago was this? Was this? This was YouTube? like this was like two years ago. Oh, it was two years. Yeah. So you look it up on YouTube. Yeah, you can say look it up on YouTube. How do I get to YouTube on a Mac? I don't know. <laughs> like, how do I close a window? How do I do any of this? Because it's like, I swear, it feels like a Mac just ripped off of Windows, yeah. and just using it made me angry. Because there's no loopholes. You had to do it like specifically to get where you're going. Whereas yeah, yeah. a PC, you know, as you know, IT showed us with his Android versus like a Mac, you could just like make a shortcut, and it's right there. And there's like a thousand ways to get where you're going on a right. PC. On a Mac, there's one way and one way only. Yep. <laughs> Which. You know, the Mac is, I would think, better for old people because it's got these big old buttons on there and everything's on the desktop and it's all right there, easy to get and to. And there is only one way to do it. It doesn't right. get confused them. They're like, well, right. I but like the, I to me, this way, now it's this way. Uh, and I understand and it's like to me, having the alternate routes is a nice thing to have because it's like, oh, okay, I can't access it this way. Do a little type in, do a little little manipulating, and things get a little kooky, a little crazy. Sorry, it's a joke. But uh, you just get in there, you get it, you know, you can get in there no matter what on a PC. But on a Mac, it's locked down like, you know, jail. It's like you can't go any yeah. other way. It's and a, they, they, they did it that way by design because they have more control. The Unfortunately, Apple... They make it to where they have a lot of control over their system. Even even like on phones, like apps and stuff. There's this huge arduous process that you got to go through to get an app like on iOS. Right. Versus Android, it's like anybody can make an Android app and just put it on there. Like, <laughs> it's pretty trash. Sometimes. Yeah, and sometimes that's a bad thing though, because there could be some really crappy. Yeah, apps. Google stepped up and made something called Play Protect. Right. Which oh, it's basically they? like a virus scanning. Thing. So if it finds an app on your phone that's like that you downloaded from the Google Play Store that was verified by Play Protect and then all of a sudden it wasn't because of like security breaches. This homie like IT is downloading a McDonald's app. Okay, listen here, bud. I want deals. <laughs> I, sh I shop at McDonald's frequently. <laughs> shop at McDonald's. Did you get hungry thinking about? So oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get food Mac. before I go home. When we're done with this, I'm going to get food. That's why I get like, some chicken McNuggets. Some chicken McDonald. <laughs> chicken McNuggets. Well, I'm my regist whole family. I'm my registering family. now. I'm gonna sign up with Google. Imagine going to Thanksgiving dinner and it's just a big old pile of nuggets from McDonald's. Dude, I would food. literally piss myself. <laughs> I love chicken McNuggets so much. <laughs> yeah. Hot mustard and chicken McNuggets. <laughs> Dude, have you had Chick Fil A sauce? Of course I have. I yeah. love Chick Fil A. Well, Chick Fil A's nuggets are like S tier. McDonald's are pretty B tier. Yeah, they're pretty okay. What? The pretty okay. What? Chick fil A? Mc no, 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 no. I'm, so, I'm talking McDonald's chicken yeah. McNuggets. They're good like every once in a while, dude. Where the that? hell is this podcast? <laughs> I have no idea. Bro, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is all off the cuff. I don't know. <laughs> like, this is kind of free roam right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we could, you know, wrap it up here soon, but like, <laughs> you know, we're having good fun. We'll talk about chicken McNuggets. Your, your, chicken McNuggets. Your, your arm was up there, uh, uh, Vigilant. Yeah. And I looked down and I, I saw, like, uh, your stomach, your hairy stomach there. Yeah, I'm for sorry, minute. man. And no, no, here. I thought that was your arm, and I thought your hand was in your pants. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you might wonder why things got a little weird. I started thinking about those deals for McDonald's, man, with the chicken McNuggets. I just, whoo, I just got a little crazy, got a little cuckoo. I seriously thought your hand was in your pants. Give me the pump. Give me the air pump. That's, did you see me do this? Or Damn. <laughs> I got a very hairy, hairy belly that turns blonde in the sun. I swear I thought that was a hairy arm. That's funny, dude. I got a, I got a very hairy, hairy belly that turns blonde in the sun. And he loves kids to jump on his belly. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Joe Biden cracks me up. It's not the first crazy thing he said. Oh no, no, it's not. He uh, yeah. the uh, he also like said something really racist here. Fairly he called recently too. kids like, and you know, being that he's around a bunch of African American children. Yeah, yeah. He said roaches. Well, he roaches, but also, but also, he said, uh, 
uh, in another speech, because he was talking about like uh, poor people and stuff, but but he said uh, some basically alluded to the fact that if he was white that she was rich and if he was black that she was poor because he was like talking about black kids and then and then uh, and he said uh, you know white kids don't have this you know uh, it, it, he's all but it, you know if you're black you're poor <laughs> right like, which is what like the, what 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 that doesn't well that's kind of like the the hypocrisy of the left too because they accuse. You know, they accuse uh, everybody who's, like, slightly right of center of being, like, extremely racist and, like, appropriating culture and making assumptions and yeah. judging people. And it's, like, their entire system is based on, like, how much of a victim that, like, minorities are and how how much help that minorities need. Now, honestly, if I was a minority, I wouldn't be able to stand the left. Yeah. That would drive me up the wall. Oh, oh, you need help. Why? Because you're black. See, that's just it. The, the, that's the left, racist as hell. The, the left are the ones that treat them like this second-class citizen. It's like, right. mm, what? Right. And, I, and I got news for you, Mr. Joe, if you ever hear this, you and your legs that turn blonde in the sun. Um, been white my whole life. I've also been pretty poor my whole life. So I've been white my whole life. Yeah, yeah I've been white my whole life. Are you like, kidding me, dude? Yeah. I don't know if you're. I don't Bro, know if you, you, got cheat, that. you got cheat codes. You I, got I cheat do. codes. You know, you know, the thing with that. I have though, to paint myself every day. The thing with that is, though, uh, it. Uh, speaking of cheat codes, I I have tried to like make this like little card because I, I I heard that I have a white privilege card. So I took a piece of cardboard and I wrote white privilege on it. I can't get shit with that card. Yeah, I called the social security office. I said, hey, I think I got a. I missed a card that I was supposed to get from the government. Yeah, I said I was, you know, a Caucasian male who oh. was also straight. We need to really do that and record it. That would be funny. Hey, so <laughs> yeah, so we need to call the we need to call like the local Farmington Social Security yeah, yeah. office and be like, so I hear that there's a card that I can get. That's a that it's a I'm a white Caucasian male who's straight and comes from a family where my parents are still like together. <laughs> Um, so, as I understand, I'm supposed to have, like, a privilege that I'm supposed to be able to go into stores and be treated better, and people are supposed to be nice to me and accept me and stuff like that. So, there's been kind of a misunderstanding, <laughs> because I, I everywhere I go, everyone treats me like they treat everybody else, like, I'm not a straight, white, Caucasian male, and I just... I'm just kind of wondering, like, uh, what's going on here, because I keep hearing about it, people keep telling me that I'm privileged... Um, I've never gotten that, and I feel a little ripped off. So could I get that like ASAP? You should. You should. Uh, when you call in, you should say um, make it sound like an official. Like, um, where do I sign up for the uh, WP form? WP form. Yeah, yeah, WP form, and then they just like like say really well. well I'm, I'm, I heard on the on the, on the TV that the that now you guys are offering WP forms, and I just I. I've never had that. I, I'm in my. I am Caucasian, and mm. uh, my family's always have never always been together. They've never been divorced or anything. Right. Uh, we were in a nuclear family. We never did drugs. Um, yeah, we never did drugs. Uh, we are not actually that rich, which is that. That's the reason why I want the WP form, and be real serious about it. Right, <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> I'm a little bit lost. Could you? What does WP stand for? Uh. I well, I was know. hoping you could tell me. Yeah. I was hoping uh, you could tell me. I was, I, somebody told me on the street I should sign up for it. And I should sign up for it. And I just, I was, I was told it would really help me out. Because apparently all these other people around me who are um, white have a, a, a privilege, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And I, I was told that I should have that, but I, I haven't seen it anywhere. And I may, maybe I lost it when I was a kid or something. I... I don't know, but I've been treated pretty shitty Dude, my whole be, life. That'd be better than the, the, <clears throat> the when you told me about the whole away stuff. That'd be oh the thought the, begone. Yeah, the, yeah. the thought that would be that was a funny. long time ago. Yeah, when I had that Me uh, Mexitora on PlayStation, <laughs> freaking going ham on our local East Main Walmart. So basically, yeah, I had a um, whore begone in like English. Yeah. Um, the the entire garden center at East Main Walmart was looking for uh, thought begone, thought begone um, because uh, my buddy Mexitora had a thought infestation of thought sniffing his bushes, and it was an emergency, and Walmart was his only hope, and. 
you know, like I said, a young guy finally got a hold of the phone and was like, you guys have got this entire department, like, freaking out right now. <laughs> uh, and he just hung up, and it was it was quite a highlight of my life, being able to <laughs> punk Walmart like that. <laughs> but I'd like to be able to punk the, uh, punk the local uh, SS office. That would be great. That would be great. You know, and I bet, oh, man, imagine if it was, like, uh... One of those, like, really entitled, say, like, I don't know, like, if it was, like, a Native American or something. That's actually the last time I was in there, because I had to get my card when I went to my new job, right. because I couldn't find it, so I had to go get a new card. Mm -hmm. And I went over there, and that's, like, all that was there. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I think that would be funny. Like, imagine if someone took it, like, the wrong way, and it's, like, like, you stupid or something? Like, that doesn't exist. I'm, like... But, but I heard... But Joe Biden told me that I needed it. Right. And, like, I just... I heard that I had a privilege card. I, but, I mean, I haven't been able to get into college. I haven't been able... So, I, I really feel like I'm, I'm missing out on a lot of opportunities since I lost this privilege. Yeah, and I heard that I just automatically, with me having this card, supposedly... It brought my credit score up at least 100 points. Right. I, I'm so confused because I have really crappy credit right now. Right, and that's just it's it's funny. Like I, I could see that really being a thing, you know. Yeah. Tune in next podcast. We'll all have like an open line on the phone, speaker yeah. phone. Uh, comment if you would like us to do that, and also comment if you would like us to maybe to eventually do some kind of live forum where we do a sit down, like maybe at like San Juan College or something. A sit down protest at San Juan. No, College? not a sit down protest. What would you say? A like sit a, down like a podcast thing. Like a like a podcast or like just uh like a just talk to college students. That like, would be cool. I'll we'll have like our cameras out. Yeah, we'll have, have your to, cameras I mean, out. Get a camera. Just yeah. just see how they feel about like current events. Yeah, like, find like, like you know white people and be like, have you got your WP card? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you get into this college? Was it your WP card? Was it your WP card? Uh, yeah. What's a WP card? Uh. Sure. Yeah, like, this is how you got into the college, right? Just act all indignant. Yeah, like, totally indignant. What is the WP We should card? dress up like liberals. Like, with, it. like, I'll have, like, a whole beanie. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Come I'll have... Starbucks. Yeah. Coffee. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, no, nah, screw. Like, you know, San Juan College is a lot of working people, you know. You're yeah, yeah. find mostly workers there. Fort but... Lewis. Let's go to Fort Lewis. Fort Lewis in Colorado, Durango. Yeah. Oh, people would be like, Whoa. If you want us to go up to Fort Lewis College and dress up like liberals and ask them if they got their WP card to get in, <laughs> please like, comment, and subscribe. You know, you know, we really, I mean, and maybe not next podcast, but one of these podcasts or, you know, we'll start doing little bonus shorts where we actually yeah. do that. And yeah. Like, we'll, we'll ask them and be like, <laughs> um, you know, have you got your uh, WP card? Uh, what? <laughs> And, you know, uh, just so on and so forth. Um, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, like I said, share us around and all that. What time is it? About 11? Yeah, I think it's about time to No, we'll roll it up. up. We'll roll it up. It was fun night tonight. It was good. It was fun. really fun. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead. Um, could you load up the, um, the usual sign-off we do with the uh, anthem? Yeah, we'll load that up. And uh, thank you, Lord. For being with us tonight, thank you for all the wonderful mercies and blessings you give us every day. Go ahead and continue to bless us, Lord, with everything you've got, Lord. And I thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I find myself praying and thanks a lot. Um, so thank you, Lord. Guide us, protect us, and ensure us wisdom. I can't pray enough for wisdom, Lord. Um, give us ideas. Reveal, you know, reveal the tricks of the enemy to us. Keep us posted, Lord. And bless our, bless our listeners tonight. Bless all those who aren't listening. And bless the United States of America. Thank you, Lord, very much. Yes. Amen. 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 Have a good one, everyone.